this day for his healing power for all that he has done. You are welcome to another Bible studies. Welcome to Christ Global Gospel Ministry, wherever you are. We welcome you this evening. And uh, we trust in that God would uh, teach every one of us that the Holy Spirit would uh, grant his word unto us. Amen. For the word of God needs discernment and not just the wisdom of man, but the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. For us to get the true uh, substance in God's word, we need the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. So I'm trusting God that uh, the Holy Spirit will abide with you today Amen. and administer to you. Amen. Uh, continue to encourage us uh, to fellowship, to praise God, to thank Him for ever before we come on air. We've done that uh, so that you'll be prepared. For it is only with thanksgivings, with worship, with uh, adoration, we come into His presence. So I just want to thank God for your life, for tuning in tonight. And uh, we want to encourage you to participate in any way you can. Just send your comments and uh, we we'll, would we'll, uh, ensure that uh, it is noted and, uh, and is discussed. As God leads us today, we'll be studying the victory that overcomes the world. Mm -hmm. The Word of God says there is a victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Amen. And that is in God's word, in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. I just want someone to help me read that place. The book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It's talking about a particular victory that overcomes the world. Everything the world is doing against you, there is something you possess that would overcome every situation that will be thrown against you. It will overcome every impossibility. This is God's word. If we are there, we can please read verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that cometh, overcometh the world, even our faith. So the word of God is saying, right here as it is read just now, that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. When you have faith, nothing the world will throw against you that will be able to defeat you. When you have faith, the world will never be able to discourage you. Mm -hmm. When we have faith, you would triumph over every situation. Amen. With this faith that we're talking about now, the men of old, the women of old in the scriptures, they overcame all things. Some of, some of them overcame affliction. They overcame death. Yeah. Some were sold into two. Some walked into unknown lands. And yet, they succeeded. Every trial that they faced, difficult trials, mm -hmm. sometimes almost inhuman trials that they faced, but they triumphed at the end. Amen. When we have this faith, then the world cannot discourage us mm -hmm. and nothing will be impossible for us. Amen. We always miss these things as believers. When, do we, when we ask, do we have faith? Everyone ra raise up their hand. I have faith in God. I'm not asking whether you have faith in God. That is not the faith I'm talking about here. The faith I'm talking about here is the faith that is discussed in the Word of God in Romans 10, 17. This faith comes from God. This faith is when you hear from God. When you hear from God, that is faith. Mm -hmm. That is the faith I'm talking about now. Any man that I've heard from God, even at the point of death, he will not give in. Mm -hmm. Any man that I've heard from God, even when all things come against him, he will not give in. Yeah. Any man that I've heard from God, he will be able to go every length. There will be something inside of him that is a source of strength that will never let him fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. when 
is in prison, even when he looks like Pharaoh is staring before him, when he remembers the word of God to him, and knows that God never failed, he would he will get up once again mm -hmm. and move forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This faith always overcome the world. Amen. When you have faith, which is God's word to you, many of us will pick something on the scriptures and we turn it into us. And when those things do not happen to you, it looks like as if God has failed. This faith I'm talking is God's word to you in the revelation. God's directives to you. To you alone. That is the faith. What God says, what God's directives to you alone must come to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when God speaks to you directly, when he gives you a directive, it provokes something in you that is supernatural. Mm -hmm. It provokes a supernatural, superhuman strength in you. That even when you are looking at death, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. This was why those old disciples, in the old scriptures and the new ones, they were able to face death. It was not like as if they were superhumans, but they had God's directives yeah. to them. Amen. We see in the case of Apostle Paul, every danger he faced, every trials, every sufferings and punishment he, he went through, he was yes, Stefan. It was like as if he was superhuman. He wasn't superhuman. He only had God's directives that made him to have a supernatural strength within him. Amen. When God speaks to you, you'll never be the same again. Amen. When God speaks to you, you'll be ready to face death mm -hmm. face to face. Yeah. And yet, you will not back down. Amen. He creates a strength in you that is divine. Many of us that is what we need. The faith of God. And when we have that, there is no situation, no circumstance that will be able to discourage us or to bring us down. Yeah. In the word of God, in the book of Acts chapter 21, verse 10 to 14. Acts chapter 21. 10 to 14, please. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Ask 21, from 10 to 14. And as we tarried, there many days, and they came down from Judea, a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he came, and when he was come unto us, he took Paul Grill and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus sell the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews and Jerusalem bind the man that owned the griddle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they that place, we sought him not to go up to Jerusalem. And then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be... Amen. Amen. Now, before we read that 14, when Apostle Paul was minded to go to Jerusalem, God has already given him a directive that he is going to behold Caesar. He's going to take this gospel to the Gentiles. He's going to behold Caesar himself. So, and the process of building Caesar was for him to go to Jerusalem. So, when a certain prophet called Agabus came to them in where they were, maybe I guess in the Caesarea, and he prophesied that Apostle Paul will be imprisoned in Jerusalem, he will be binded, and he will be. A, a, a kind of uh, uh, become coming to bounds, bounds. 
he will go into imprisonment. He will go into bondage. When he was saying these things, Apostle Paul said, these things does not trouble him. Yeah. Those are the things that will make any man chill and be afraid and change his plans. There, the world would have overcome him. Because it was being prophesied that it, that would be the end of his freedom. And from there, he will be in bondage before he dies. Yeah. He was no longer to have freedom again. His death was already staring at his face. It was prophesied to him. And it looks like as if Apostle Paul was immune. Immune to fear. Immune to these circumstances that were coming to befall him. Why? Because he had faith. Yeah. He had the directive of God. He had the word of God. And he said, What mean ye to weep? And to break my heart. For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. He was able to overcome that circumstance, that fear that would have made any man to change his plans and thereby be overcome by the world. This was an impossible situation facing him. But he was able to overcome that situation by what? By faith. Mm -hmm. By the direct, by the word of God mm -hmm. to him. That is going to behold Caesar. Even when he was in the ship on his way to Rome. And the ship was about to break down, to capsize, to sink. Apostle Paul was the only one on that ship that had no fear. He had faith. Yeah. What is that faith? Because God told him that he must see Caesar eye to eye. And since he has not yet behold Caesar, he knew that he would not die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even in that situation, in that circumstance, he was able to overcome the world. Yeah. The world could not overcome him. So, we are to dwell on God's word. But first, we need to have God's word. Many pray for miracles. Many pray, do a lot of prayers. But my brothers and sisters, we should labor to have God's word. Because when we have God's word, we now have a faith that can overcome a mountain. Yeah. We now have a faith that can move a mountain. Amen. We now have a faith that is able to do the impossible. Amen. That is it. That is the faith that overcomes the world. God's word to you. Not just me studying the Bible and one verse appears to me. God says, I shall prosper. Then I will hold that one and become my singing uh, 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 slogan or my, uh, my logo that I will be singing every time. The Lord says he will provide me my needs according to his riches in glory. Did God tell you that? Did God tell you that? You read it in his word. It's true. But that is not the faith I'm talking about. Faith in Romans 10, 17 says, comes only by hearing God's word. By hearing God's word. So we need to labor. We need to pray that God speak to me. Because when God speaks to you, it becomes a faith that will overcome the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. It becomes a faith that will never fail. Even when you are weak, that faith will make you to be strong. Amen. When everybody becomes discouraged, when your mind reflects on what God has told you, supernatural strength will come into you. Because yeah. God's word quickens. God's word wakes you up. When you remember that encounter and God spoke his words to you, your life will change. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, I'm not only ready to be in prison, I'm ready to die. Yeah. And it looks so supernatural. But Apostle Paul was like a man like us. The word of God also said, 
Elijah was a man with like weaknesses as us. But he said he should not reign for three years and six months. And he did not reign. What kind of faith is that? You think Elijah just slept one night and woke up and decided to play God and decided to say, let it not rain? And you think the, that would have happened? It's not God. The Bible must, might not have written that, but from our studies today, we should know that God must have spoken to him. Yeah. Because it's only what God says that can stand. Mm -hmm. What God has not said, wishful thinking, wishful words, he, he does not hold water. That is the faith of man. That is the determination of man. It will get somewhere, when your power is, get exhausted, it will fail. Mm -hmm. But what God has said, that never fails. At all. And it overcomes the war. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. We know this uh, chapter is all about faith. And we're going to uh, study this chapter properly. And we're going to get the much out of it. So that you can then know what to do. You can then spend good time seeking God's word that God should speak to you. Mm -hmm. When God speaks to you, it becomes an inspired word. The one you read in the Bible, they are letters. The devil can as well read it. Native daughters can read it. Anybody can read it. Mm -hmm. It is what the Lord speaks to you. That is the quickened word. It quickens you. How many times have you read the Bible? And after reading it, you do not feel anything. You remain the same. You might even forget the next moment. But what God told you 20 years ago, you can still remember now. Yeah. Because it's a quickening word. The same Bible you read, the same word of God you read yesterday, and you do not even remember the chapter, sometimes even the, the book, whether, whether it was John or Matthew, sometimes you don't even remember. But what God spoke to you 20 years ago is still fresh in your mind mm -hmm. because it's a quickened word. It's the same, but this time it's quickened because it's coming directly to you. And that one is for you and you alone. It's no longer a general word to whosoever would that will believe. It's not to you. Your name it's on that word that God speaks to you. Mm. And for that reason, that word must accomplish the purpose for which God has said it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that word will not allow you to fail. That word will keep you. Amen. That word will fight for you. Amen. When, when you are doing what God now says you, sh you should be doing, Anyone that is not fighting against you, God will be defeating them. Amen. But that word will be fighting for you. Amen. That word will be providing for you. That word will be leading you. Amen. Because it's the quickened word. That is the faith of God. And it comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. So in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, I'll read verse 1 and 2. Say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, in this uh, chapter 11, anywhere we see by, we will substitute it with wit. Wit. So it says in verse 2, it says, for by, by it, the elders obtain a good result. With, with it, with this faith, the elders, they were victorious. Mm -hmm. That is what he's saying. With this faith, by it, with this faith, by this faith, that is what he's saying now. He's taking us back to verse 1. He said, faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For 
by it, by this faith, in verse 1, the men of old that stood before the Red Sea, that stood before the Jordan, that stood before lions, mm -hmm. that stood before impossible situations, by this faith, they were able to conquer yes. and have victory. Amen. Amen. By this faith. What is this faith? The world they heard from God. I'll go to verse 8 and I'll start from there. So it says, by faith, with faith. Which faith are we talking about? The word that Abraham heard from God. The God's directives to Abraham. Do not forget, my brothers and my sisters, during the time of old, the time of Abraham, the time of these holy men of old, yeah. there was no Bible. Talk mm -hmm. they went to read the Bible and they not key, key into a particular verse. The word and the faith they were hearing then was directly from God. Yeah. It was directly from God. There, is no, there was no Bible as we are carrying it now. And let's, let me open to verse, chapter so and so and verse so and so. It was just God speaking directly to his people. So he says in verse 8, With faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which he should, after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Which man will be so stupid, which man will be so dumb, to go into the forest, into an unknown land, to leave his father's house, to leave the security of the life he knows, and just start wandering about? It was only possible because God gave Abraham clear directives. Active, yeah. And that became what he held on to. God has said it. And God will do it. Amen. And anywhere he goes, if God has not spoken, he continues to move on. Because he knew that when he gets to the right place, God will speak to him again. Yes. So he was just going from place to place until God speaks to him. He was just moving by faith. He gets somewhere, whether it's prosperous or not, if God has not spoken for him to stay, he packs his load again and moves. He was being led by faith. Yeah. He was being guided by God's word. In verse 9, it says, with faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He was looking for a city. He was looking for that location. How was he looking for it? Anywhere he goes, if God does not ask him, he knew that when he gets to the right place, God will speak to him. So, he just keep on moving. And indeed, when he got to where he needed to be, God spoke to him again. Yeah. So, he started by faith and continued by faith. Not that he started by faith and then used human wisdom to conclude it. Yeah. God is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. When he says it, when he starts it, he is the one that will also finish it. Amen. That is, most of us, we hear God's word, we pick it up, a time will come, we will think we want to help God. Maybe God has forgotten. Abraham made similar mistake. God spoke to him, he started with God, a time came from the advice of his wife, he decided to help God by sleeping with his wife's uh, maiden. And then he had Ishmael. But he had to learn from that error. Yeah. 
So all these are examples to us. That's why the scriptures are there. So that we do not make similar errors in our own walk with God. 11. It said, true faith. Also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. He said, true faith. Sarah that was 75 years old. She has passed all the period of a woman reproducing. But when she was at the back of the door, when God, those three men that came to meet Abraham under the tree, when they told Abraham, when God told Abraham, Sarah will have a child, and she laughed at the back of the door. We remember in Genesis. When she heard that word, she received strength. That word provoked strength in her. That word turned her entire nature around. Mm -hmm. What was barren, what was old, what was no longer productive, that word transformed it Amen. to become fertile, mm -hmm. to become alive, to become young, to be able to carry a child. Amen. She heard that word. Faith coming by hearing. So when she heard that word at the back of the door, faith came into her. Mm -hmm. Until you hear the word of God, you can never have faith. You have the faith of man. Because man do have faith. I can be very determined to build a house. And I'll be working almost 24 hours. 24-7. In a year, two years, time, I'll build a house. That is also faith. But it has limitation. Yeah. The faith that overcomes the world is the one that we hear from God. In 12, it said, Therefore, spring there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand, which is by the seashore, innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and we are persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now these ones, the faith that God gave to them, Gave them so much confidence. Even though some of the things God revealed to them, they did not see it in their own lifetime. But they were confident. They were happy. They were assured that they must happen. Mm -hmm. As a result, they gave their life for it. God told David that his own son, when David said he's going to build a temple for God, a house for God. God said, it is your son, Solomon, that will build it. David knew that his eyes would not see that temple. Yeah. But because he had faith, because God has spoken to him, David used the rest of his life to provide everything Solomon would need. To build that temple. Because mm -hmm. David already saw that temple. Well ahead of time. Because God gave him faith. And through faith. With faith. David provided. Even though he was not the one. He did not see that temple finished. But in his heart. He knew that it must happen. Amen. Yeah. So through faith. He provided. All these ones that the Bible is talk, talking about, some of the things that God revealed to them, some of the things they died for, they did not behold it. But they were happy knowing that it must surely happen. Amen. This can only come. This can only happen. A man can only expend his efforts for what he's sure about. If you are not sure about it, you won't expend your effort. Okay. When God speaks to you, 
your assurance will be more than 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. You come to a place where you are beyond every doubt. When God speaks, he blows away every cloud, every obscurity, every confusion, every uncertainty. It's like an east wind that comes and blows away every cloud, cloudiness. And there will be clarity and sanctity. Yeah. That clarity and sanctity will be so powerful that whatever the world throws against you, it will not be powerful enough to stop you from accomplishing your purpose. Amen. And thereby, the mountain that you saw before, because of that supernatural determination, and have God's faith that is in you. And the power of the word of God and the Holy Ghost now walking in you. That uh, mountain will become a level ground. Amen. That is it. It continues. In 14, it says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they have been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country, that is unheavenly, unheavenly, where, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. With faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that have received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy receive thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. This world, this West looks so complicated, but if you follow this line of thoughts, of this teaching of the Holy Ghost, if you follow this ministration, you will get the subtle word of God. The word of God is saying, Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice, because God revealed to him that he will bring Isaac back to life. He said, Abraham accounted that God is able to bring him back to life. How could Abraham have... It hasn't happened before. Yeah. Abraham had no reference. He had no reference to, to bank on. And say, this one died and God brought him back. He had no reference. So how could Abraham have been sure that if Isaac died, God will bring him back to life? Well... There's only way, one way God, Abraham would have known. By faith. Yeah. By faith. That is by hearing the word of God. He knew. Because God has revealed it to him that he will bring him back to life. That is God's word for you. Yeah. There are extraordinary things that men and women did in the scriptures. And we'll be wondering, why can't we do it these times? You know what? Because that kind of faith, we no longer labor to have it. The men of old would take their time, labor and labor and labor in prayers, in meditation, in their work with God. To have the word of God. Once you have the word of God, you now have a faith that will overcome the world. Yeah. Nothing the world will throw against you that you will not be able to overcome. Amen. When you have faith, which is God's word to you, nothing the world will do that will over, overcome you. Amen. We are to labor, we are to pay the price to abide in faith. When you abide in faith, you are hiding in the secret place of the Most High. Yes. When you abide in faith, 
That is God's word to you. What, what, what do you mean by this? When you are unmovable, mm. when you do not waver, when you do not turn away from what God tells you, you are abiding in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. Yeah. When you are abiding in what God says, because circumstances will come against you. The whole situation will look like as if you have been deceived. The whole situation would present itself like as if you don't know what you are doing. You have been deceived. But the Lord says, He that abides in the secret place of the Most High, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he shall be the one that will triumph Amen. at the end. Amen. He shall overcome. Amen. Victory will be his portion. Amen. So we have to, there's a price to pay to abide in faith. It's a very big price. It's never easy. Abraham paid a big price. Yeah. Oh, there's no one that paid a, a simple price in the scriptures. Our Lord Jesus Christ paid a big price to abide in faith. In 17, in, in, okay, we are in 20 now. He said, by faith, with faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. With faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. You know what happened? Uh, Jacob had 12 sons. God has already ordained it that one of those 12 sons, God is going to remove him to become 11. So when Jacob was about to die, by faith, he blessed the two sons of Joseph. So that those two sons will make up for the 12. God has already granted faith to Jacob that Levi will become the priesthood. Yeah. And Levi will be cut off from the 12 to now make 11 sons. So how do you make up for the 12 sons? By faith, Jacob, many years before, many years ever before God called Levi, by faith, Jacob blessed the two sons Menasset and Ephraim so that they will make up for the 12 sons of Jacob. Jacob wouldn't have been blessing the two sons of Joseph because that would have been partiality. That would have been, uh, it would have been impossible. How can you turn a nephew to become a son? How can you turn a nephew to become a son? But by faith, he blessed those two sons and gave them the portion of a son. Mm -hmm. Because he has already seen it. God has revealed it to him. That one day, Levi will be removed from inheritance to become a priest. And Menasset and Ephraim will make up for the twelve sons. So when you have this understanding... The Bible concerning faith becomes clearer. Because you hear people talking about faith everywhere. And yet, they, 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 they have no strength. Faith gives strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Faith gives ability. Faith is where the victory is. Faith conquers all obstacles. Amen. Amen. Even when this body is decaying, the faith never decays. At all. You still see a man that is dying of ailments, of sicknesses, of diseases. In the sick bed, he will still have faith. Mm -hmm. You'll be saying, just confess that you know, 
He will still have faith until he dies. Because that God faith can never be defeated. At all. It triumphs above all obstacles. Amen. Amen. He continues. In 22. said, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made measure of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. With faith, Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Let me tell you, in those times, the commandment of the king is like between life and death. All other families in Israel, they submitted their first son to be killed. All other families in Israel that gave birth to sons then, they all submitted their sons to be killed. How come Jacob, the mother of Moses, and the father, how come they were bold enough? How come they were bold enough to disobey Pharaoh? What made them bold enough to overcome that decree? He says, by faith, mm -hmm. they heard from God mm -hmm. that the child that is being conceived, this child will one day become a savior. Yeah. Amen. God gave them the plan. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they were ready to give their life to make sure that child do not die. Amen. That is it. 20, 24. Said, with faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. It, you see, when we read these things without proper discernment, we don't really get the understanding. Moses was raised up from his from infancy as an Egyptian. He was raised up in the family of Pharaoh, in affluence, in works, in every privilege. And the word of God says, by faith, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What would make a man pick a poor man today and go and put him from a child in a family that is so afflicted or whatever? He will hardly even remember his people. He will hardly even remember them. He wouldn't want to leave that wet or all those privileges to come and become a slave again. The word of God says, Moses received faith from God. Yeah. He heard the word of God. And that was able to remove that carnal mindedness away from him. That covetousness. That materialistic mind. Mm -hmm. That mind that goes after words. Yeah. After the good things of life. That mind that will clinch to the good things of Egypt. That word of God blew them away. Yeah. It blew them away. Yeah. And it was not ready to suffer affliction. Yeah. Why? Because of faith. Because the word of God quickened him supernaturally. He chose to suffer affliction because he had faith. It's only by faith we can do the impossible. It's only by faith we can overcome yeah. the faith of God. We no longer pray to hear from God. In rather, we pray that God should give us things. Give us money. Give us heads. Give us weights. Give us children. Give us the things of this earth. That is what we pray for. We don't pray, Father, give me your word. And it is that word that will move the mountain mm -hmm. that is before you. Amen. When you have that word, 
you have overcome the world. Amen. And you have everything. Amen. He continues. 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, or with faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses saw the invisible by faith. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. With faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, were drowned. How can you stand before the Red Sea and decide to cross it? Except God has spoken to you. Yeah. Except God has spoken to you. Moses was being directed by faith. He was being led by faith. That was just it. Because the way that he was going through, he has never gone through that road before. He had to depend on someone that knows the way. And he was being guided by that someone. And that is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Faith. He was not afraid. He had the word of God. When you have the word of God, you will not be afraid. Amen. So we see all these people right there to verse 40. He's talking about these people, they had faith. The whole of chapter 11, the book of Hebrews, is talking about God faith. Not the faith you call yourself. See a sister, see a brother, they call him faith, they call her faith. And later discover that they have no faith. Faith is hearing from God. Yeah. Faith is what God tells you. Faith is not what you read here. Faith is what God tells you. What you read here, you so much believe it. A time will come. The situation will be so dire. dire. The situation will be so desperate. The situation will be so difficult. You will abandon what that thing you read here. You will abandon it. But the one that overcomes the word is that word that you hear from God. That is a quickened word. It will quicken your spirit. It will make you become someone that will never go backward. Someone that will never give in. Mm -hmm. Someone that will be ready to die. Mm -hmm. Just like Apostle Paul. Not only to be imprisoned, but also to die for that world. The book of Luke chapter 18 verse 8. The Lord Jesus Christ asked the question. He says, When the Son of Man comes back to this earth again, Will you see this kind of faith? In verse 8, Luke 18. Say, I tell you that you will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? If the Son of Man comes today, this faith we have been studying about, this faith we have heard, Will he find it in you? Will he find it in me? This God's word. God's word. When God speaks to you, you will be ready to suffer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when we left our former ministry and God called us out by his grace and mercy to start Christ Global Gospel Ministry. It was a period of extreme persecution. Period of extreme affliction. Yeah. Personal suffering. Almost like depression. 
the only thing that made us to say true is the very word that God gave to us. The very word that God gave to us. We started doing things we never dreamt we would do. We went to places we were not supposed to go just to ask for some help. But we were, even when we were doing all those, we had a, a big amount of joy within us. There was joy within us. Even with that sorrow, even with that suffering, even with all the tongues that were raised up from the peace of hell, we had joy and contentment mm -hmm. within us. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would have made that possible for a man to rejoice and be contented in the midst of persecution, in the midst of affliction, is faith. Mm -hmm. The word of God to you. Jesus said, when he comes back again, he will be looking for those that have the word of God. Will you be one of them? Matthew 17, 20 says, The victory that overcomes the world. It's what we are discussing today. The victory that overcomes the world. If you want to overcome the world, then you need to have faith. Because that's what the word of God says in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It said, The victory that overcomes, that overcomes the world, even our faith. That's the victory that overcomes the world. Without faith, we cannot overcome the world. In verse 20, it says, in Matthew 17, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith now, let's pause for a while, not determination, not if you have determination, if you have zeal, no. If you have the word of God, God. If you have the word of God, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you have the word of God, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Amen. If you have the word of God, you must dwell in it. You must abide in it. When you abide in it, then, according to Psalm 91, it said, He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. When you abide in faith, then you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. As a result, nothing can defeat you. Amen. Yes. When you abide in the word of God, you are abiding in the secret place of the Most High. That is it. Mm -hmm. You must abide in it. You must be unmovable. You must not waver. In the book of James chapter 1, verse 5 to 7 there, he said, someone that moveth cannot receive anything. The man that changes, the man that moves away from God's word cannot achieve anything. Mm -hmm. That's in Matthew 21, 21. That's in Matthew 21, 21. It says, Jesus said, answered and said, and said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, if you have the word of God and you do not, you abide in it, you do not waver. If you have the word of God to you and you do not waver, that is what he's saying. If you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Mm -hmm. The word of God is saying, if you have the word of God, if you have faith, if you hear from God, 
and you do not move away from it. You abide in it. He said, you will tell, you declare to a mountain, and that mountain shall be moved. Amen. Amen. Impossible things will be happening in your life. Amen. Amen. Nothing will be, nothing can be an obstacle to faith. Mm -hmm. Faith bulldoes everything away. Faith overcomes a troop. Yeah. Faith makes the impossible possible. Yes. Faith makes heaven to touch the earth. Faith opens a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Faith makes the dead to come back to life. Amen. I remember this, uh, this book I read written by uh, uh, Archbishop Bessie Dowsa of Blessed Memory. It says, when your faith says yes, yes. And I was really touched by it many years ago. He talked in that book about a member of the church that had a son or a daughter, I can't remember, that fell from uh, maybe the first or second floor of the house. And she broke her head. And she was at the point of death in the hospital. And perhaps she died. The mother came to call him. I said, come and pray for my daughter and I know she will come back to life. He said, when he got there, you can read that book. So it's there. When your face is yes. He said, when he got there, he was so discouraged. The child's head was like the head of three children. The child was already dead. When he got there. And he was not consoling the mother to take her away. And say, God will bless, God will give another child. Try to take her away. Be realistic. The doctors were already saying they want to take the child into the monk, to the mortuary. And the mother was insisting, pray for her, just lay hands on her, dragging him. So it was like taking the mother towards the door to leave that room because they wanted to prepare the child for the mortuary. He said as he was at the door, he heard a voice that says, go back and pray for that child. Now he is hearing from God. He now has faith. Mm -hmm. This is the faith that brings the dead back to life. Yeah. This is the faith that moves yeah. the mountain. Amen. He that had no courage, all of a sudden, divine courage came. Mm -hmm. He turned swiftly and returned back to the, where the body was. And the doctors were already, he said, wait, 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 wait. They said, don't disturb us. You are holding back our job. He said, no, wait. And did not lay hand on that child and pray. And that child raised up. Amen. Was it him? No. God has spoken to him. And it is that word of God that he now built his actions upon. Yeah. If he had no heard from God and he wanted to prove a man of God, and then go there. He would have prayed for one week. Maybe they would have used the security to remove him from there. Mm -hmm. So that they can go and bury the child. He can pray there for one year. Nothing will happen. God is only obliged to his own word. When God now spoke to him, he knew that God would do it. Amen. That's the faith. That overcome the world. Such a faith, nothing can stand before it. At all. This faith can only come by hearing. Yeah. We will end with the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. You might be wondering how on earth can I get such a faith that we've been talking about in the last one hour? The word of God says, it is achievable. It is possible unto any believer. Anyone that believes in God, it is possible for them to have 
this faith. Yeah. In 17, it says, So then, faith, all this faith we've been talking about since, faith comes by hearing. Say, this faith comes when you hear. And not just any word. And hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. This faith comes when we hear God speak to us. Yeah. When God speak to us. When God speaks to you. A heavenly seed is sowed in your soul. Yeah. When God speaks to you, He removes your weaknesses. He removes your fear. When God speaks to you, He removes everything that is human from you and He now infuses into you everything that is divine. Amen. You start taking some actions that you will never on your own take. You start doing some things you would never on your own do. You become like a dead devil. You'll be dead in situation. Yeah. You'll be confronting your sanctity. Yeah. You'll be bold. Man. You'll be able to go through a troop. You will have no fear. Man. You'll be enveloped by the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Angels will minister to you. Amen. For angels guide the word of God. Angels bring the word of God to manifestation. As you abide in the word of God that God has given to you, you will be abiding in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. As a result, the Lord will be your strength. Amen. He will be your buckler. Amen. He will Amen. fight your battle. Amen. He will walk through you and with you Amen. to bring to the manifestation every word you have declared. For his word says, his word will not return back to him void. Oh. That is our assurance. Mm. That if we have the word of God, that word must succeed. God says, it will not return back to him void. Oh. It means it must happen. Yes. Amen. Come rain or shine. That is the faith that overcomes the world. Mm. And it is possible for you, for me, for every believer to have that faith. So let us pay the price to have this faith. Let us labor to have faith and be ready to pay the price to abide in it. Labor. Not to have money. Not to have weights. Not to have the things of this world. For they can be stolen. Labor to have the word of God. Amen. To have faith. Amen. And when you have it, Labor to abide in it. Mm. And then, all things will be possible unto you. Amen. I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister these words to your heart. Amen. That it will give you new meanings. New understanding. It will grant you more than you have heard today. It will grant you deeper understanding. Amen. The hidden manner in his world. And as he directs you, as you abide in it, as you do these things, your life, and the life of everyone that will ever come across you, for you and because of you, will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. I pray that you continue to seek the word of God, seek his face, labor, labor. We are yet in the time of labor. The harvest will come. Amen. When God finally speaks to you, it will bring an untold joy. Yes. And it will settle all questions. And you will put your heart at rest. Yes. And you will no longer wonder. I pray the Lord abides with you. Amen. I pray He fills you with understanding. I pray He fills you with His own heart. I pray the Holy Ghost minister to you. Amen. I pray that the word of God concerning your life that he has prepared for you ever before you were born. The very purpose of your life, that world that is for you alone. I pray that the spirit of God, that the living Christ, will speak to you tonight. Amen. He will grant it unto you. Amen. And he will grant you the spirit of remembrance. Yes. That no demon, no devils 
will be able to steal that word from you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, I thank God for your life once again. Abide in God's word. Uh, continue to tune in uh, into this uh, uh, transmission on Sunday by half one, where you will hear the truth of God, where you will hear the undiluted word of God, mm -hmm. where these words are not coated because of what you have in your pockets, where this word comes to you as God wants you to receive it. Yes. As you continue to abide in God's word, you shall be celebrated in Jesus' name. Amen. You are covered with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.